Right. Well, we'll get straight into it then, Rick. Give yep. me a little bit about yourself then and the industry so, and how you're finding it. So I'm Rick. I'm 57. Uh, my career has been within logistics, uh, e-commerce logistics, uh, working for international companies, spent a lot of time traveling all over the world. Um, and it came to the point that I just realized I wasn't spending enough time with the family and decided it was time to quit. Um, but I needed something to do. Uh, a friend of mine was a driving instructor. He seemed to have a, a good balance of life and work. So I started looking into that. Um, my main objective really was to free up time. I wanted to me to be in charge of what I do, not some um, board of directors sat in Hong Kong telling me what I should and shouldn't do. So it's really the freedom. That's what I really wanted. The freedom to do what I do, when I want to, if I want to. That was the main attraction for me. Okay, when you started looking into it, how easy was it to get information about becoming an instructor and figuring out maybe what the job was like and how to get qualified? So, first I spoke to a friend of mine who's a driving instructor. Um, he's been a driving instructor for about 25 years. Um, and he, he made it sound, you know, reasonably easy, but didn't really go into the details of what's required. And his advice was, well, why don't you ring one of the driving schools? Um, and see what they say. So that's exactly what I did. I did a bit of research on um, on the Google, as you do, um, but not knowing the industry, I wasn't quite sure what to look for. If you'd asked me to go and research e-commerce, I could have come back with some you know definite details, but knew nothing about this industry. So I researched, and everything was pointing me towards um, a driving school. Um, get your training with a driving school. So that, that's what I did. So I rang a driving school. I rang a couple, actually, but uh, particularly honed in on one particular driving school and asked them what the process was. And they they took me through the process, which seemed really simple. Um, with hindsight, though, there was a lot more to it. And if I'd spent a bit more time researching and discussing with other people, I, I, I would have known a lot more and probably made some better decisions. What decisions? Well, for example, the, the um, when I when I spoke to a driving school, um, I rang them, said, "Look, this is what I'm interested in. Um, interested in becoming a driving instructor." They said, "Fantastic! It's a great opportunity for you." Um, and then went on um, to tell me um, what it is that I need to do. Um, and what I'm really, I don't know, looking back, probably upset about being in sales on my life. I just did not pick out that this was a big sales pitch. Uh, they were selling their driving school um, and they're a business. They, they want to make money. Um, so they um, offered me discounted training, which was, a, a, you know, sounded really good. It was quite an expensive thing to do. And then they talked me through how once I'm with the franchise, I can then have um, plenty of um, um, customers, which was fantastic. Um, but what they didn't really tell me is the additional costs that are going to be involved. So, for example, you're applying for your license applying for your dbs check um the additional training required to go through um and there was i only, I only found afterwards actually when, when i really met you josh is there's two options here you can go through the pink license which is where you can charge to to train charge pupils for lessons to train or the non-pink which is um where like you know you just you don't and I, there's benefits pros and cons to the both but i just wish i'd known more about those options at the time so then i could have made a much more informed decision that suited my lifestyle and my needs. So with the charging for lessons, not charging for lessons, clearly this was what I'd spoke to you about and, and doing this episode today because you went down the pink route. I mm -hmm. didn't. I taught for free, built experience and went straight for my part three. Um, but we, we both went through the training at the same time and... Passed, yeah. I think we passed within about a month of each other, did we, our part three? Yes, right about a month, yeah, absolutely, yeah, we within three or four weeks. So what do you think the benefits were of the route that you took, being on a pink licence and being able to earn a living while trying to learn a new trade? So I think the benefits of the one is you can charge for lessons. Um, so I had a car, I had to hire a car, that had to be paid for. So the benefits then is I could charge uh, for lessons to... Um, support the hire of the car and, and the paying of the franchise. Um, I had, bearing in mind, I'd never been in this industry. I didn't know how difficult or how easy it would be to pick up um, students. 
um, who wanted to deal with someone who was only a, uh, as far as they were concerned, a trainee, P, uh, a trainee driving instructor, a PDI. Um, so having the support of a, a national company to provide those customers at the time seemed like a huge benefit as well. So there were some benefits. So I had my customers, um, I had guaranteed work, um, and I had support um, from a big company in the background. So that, that was my perception at first. So um, looking back, yeah, the benefits are, yes, there were, there, there were customers there, but that had, you know, there's a flip side to that. Um, the, there was no pressure of looking for customers, but then there was a the pressure of having customers. Um, and the benefit, there, there was a, a training program put in place, <clears throat> but with the, with the pink license, you will then were really restricted because you have six months from the start of your training, getting your pink license to passing your part three. Um, so in, with the benefit of focus is your mind, but then also it really puts a lot of pressure because you have three opportunities to pass that test, as you know. And if you don't pass third time and your pink license has run out, you have to go through the whole process of reapplying um, and all sorts of things. And then, of course, you're stuck with a car. So that that was, yeah, but the big benefits really are the customers, the support of a, of a big company behind you. What about you, though? Because you, you, you would... Um. We'll go on in a minute about that. I just something I wanted to pick up on there. You said the pressure of having customers as well while you was on your pink license. So you said you had the pressure of finding customers and the pressure of <laughs> having customers. How how was that pressure if you've got business? Yes. So um this this is what I was saying. Like you you think you've got the support of a big company behind you. Um obviously they're doing marketing in my local area. When they said, Rick, you've got your pink license, we're gonna do some marketing in your local area. Um, before I knew it, I was being flooded with, with potential customers that they said they wanted to start. I wasn't in control of those. I was just given these people want to start, please, um, please ring them and, and start um, getting them in your diary. Uh, and I think within the first week, I probably had about seven or eight pupils. And then it became more of me becoming a driving instructor. And there was more focus on me becoming a driving instructor and less focus on me training. And being in the you know people development background, I was really really aware that this isn't right. I'm focusing too much on, or sorry, that my franchise was focusing too much on building a business rather than focus on um, getting me high quality um, training um, to make sure I had the best chances to pass my my part three. Because obviously you've already done your part one and part two by then. Um, but that, that was the, the biggest problem it was just number of customers because when you get someone ringing you saying how I'm interested in lessons, it becomes very difficult to say no. Um, you're, you're too, I know you're too focused on your business. You're thinking of the future um, because you now have the franchise bills, you have the car hire bills, you have your car insurance bills. Um, you need a certain amount of customers before you even break even. And even that, I think, just to break even is too many to give you time to focus on the training. I was quite lucky that within my position, I then started saying no to customers. I'm not interested. I spoke to the franchise, I said, don't send me any customers. I'm not interested. I want to focus on my on my training. Um, I think some people may find that more difficult because they might need that money coming through. They might have their own bills to pay, their mortgages, their rent, their, their utilities bills. I was quite lucky um, that I didn't have to have the money. I didn't. It wasn't my big worry. My What I wanted to do was become a driving instructor to have free time not to work harder but so that was the i really if i'd had my time again i probably would have thought differently said no i don't need these customers all i want to do is train become a quality and focus on the training rather than that pressure of that six month pink license over your head that was a quite a burden so yeah just trying to run a business rather than learn how to kind of be an instructor get through the process and <laughs> then become an adi opposed to worrying too much that you've got six months to get your part three pass yeah yeah exactly i mean we talk a lot about some people you know you have some people out there just teach people how to draw, uh, pass driving tests um we want to make sure that we're making our pupils um safe drivers this is what i felt like with the with the the pink license they were teaching me how to pass a part three not how to become a good driving instructor that was the big difference for me Okay, so what helped you with your training? Um, 
you've obviously got the experience you're getting the on the job experience but was you also having support and training through the school to then prepare you for your part three how did yeah, you yeah so that? A, a part of my part three was done during lockdown um so i did a lot of stuff with um Lou, Lou Walsh, um which was great some online stuff i then did have a trainer um, who was audit audit trainer and very very quickly it became very apparent that the trainer was running a business to train people and he wanted to make money um which left a real sour taste in my mouth in the way that was run i don't think the quality of the trainer um was as good as i'd expect for such a such an industry that it's all about safety uh, it just seemed like a bit of a numbers game. Once I went down that pink license route, it just became very much a numbers game rather than a quality training game. So that that was the de- you know another downside for me. Just it was just push, 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 train, 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 and the quality of the training you had a minimum. Sorry, you had a maximum number of hours. Once you'd exceeded those, you had to pay extra, which was another hidden extra that uh, sort of came out, which was um, again another shock to the system. I should have done more research. I didn't. None of these other options were highlighted to me, which were really frustrating. Like I said, until I met you, I didn't really know the non-pink route existed. Um, it, it just sort of baffled me. And then, then I, I remember having a discussion with you, thinking, "Well, what an idiot! He's going, he's going non-pink. He can't even charge." Um, and then I saw how relaxed you were, thinking, "There's something wrong here. There's something seriously wrong here." <laughs> Josh has got his test coming up. He's really relaxed. I got mine coming up, and I'm absolutely panicking am i ready should i do am i in questions you josh what to do is this right is that right can you come and sit with me it's just an absolute nightmare absolute nightmare because my focus is from the company that's been driven wrong in my opinion the completely wrong things in my opinion yeah i think i was very fortunate with my training that i could i, I managed to do 40 hours um part three training but then decided not to continue with the school um and it was it was by chance that I found out about the non-pink route um, through an insurance company. I was speaking to them. I was like, look, if I get jewels in my car, will you still insure it until I pass my part three test? It was at that point that I was told, as soon as you've passed your part two, um, you can teach. You just can't charge for it. Um, but yeah, I was fortunate with my job that I was doing maybe two or three lessons a week for free. Um, I already had the car which was somewhat of an expense, but I had a car. I had dual yeah, controls. Yeah. I could manage my diary and reflect on the lessons so I didn't have the pressure to be chasing an income because I was doing it alongside my job. Um, and I think with the conversations, that was that was something that helped me having time and being able to switch off work and not chasing it because I didn't need the money from, yeah, yeah, from the yeah. driving lessons. You just said something really interesting there, actually, Josh. It's about you had time to um, plan and self-reflect on the training that you were doing. And you also said you had three or four pupils a week. I was doing that a day just to break even. Because at the time, I think the hourly rate was that the school was forcing me to sell at was about £24 an hour. Uh, my car was costing me 360 a month. Franchise fees around about £80 a week. Insurance at £600 a, a year. So you can see, I was doing those lessons a a day and as when we're doing driving lessons now you learn it's you know typically you learn so much more after the effect and if, if you could go back in time we we really encourage our pupils to reflect and something i've always done in business is reflect on the for reflect on the outcome of anything you've done be it positive or negative reflect look for opportunities how can you do more positive how can you eradicate the negatives i i really didn't have time for that i was exhausted come the end of the day and I can remember learning very late in the day that I had to have uh, a log of what my reflection was, you know, lesson planning and reflection. And I can remember writing it up the night before my part three, just just in case they asked for, have you got a log? Yeah, here it is. But it wasn't, I was with my pupils. Yeah, I was being an instructor and I was helping them, but I wasn't helping myself. I just didn't have time to, okay, then what happened there? What how did that lesson go? What would you have changed? Did you really identify any needs? Did you really solve those needs? Did you identify anything else along all the, the various um, key competencies? I wasn't doing that. I was just in lesson, next one, out lesson, next one. And then sitting at home with a cup of coffee thinking, how'd that go? Yeah, I went back. 
And then the, the big problem was my first person passed their test. I thought, yeah, now this is as easy. Um, but no reflection on me. I just did not have time because I was doing this because I wanted free time. So if I was working six or seven hours a day, it doesn't sound a lot for some people, but um, that was a lot for what I wanted to do. So I'm, I thought, well, I'm not going to go home and, uh, and reflect after that. I've, I've done my day, if you like. This is my first time I've been self-employed. I've done my seven hours. Why should I do any more? Of course, you need to reflect. And that's what really hit home with me when you just said I had time to reflect. Now I've got time to reflect, yeah. <laughs> but, was, yeah. Uh, so when you was on your pink licence, was that the advice? Because I know obviously you had training um, between lessons and you had a few other things going on. But was you getting advice and, and maybe taught how to and the best way to reflect on what you should be doing, what you should be looking at, at what you're doing to then prepare you for either improving as an instructor or getting ready for your part three and passing your part three? So I think this, this sort of falls under two categories, really, Josh. One, when I was doing my part one, in the theory, that was fine. Then I was doing my part two to part, you know, get through. Um, all with the same um, trainer. And then it come to starting to train for the part three. And the only thing that ever was mentioned was the pink. That's the way you have to go. Um, so I, I wasn't even aware that you couldn't, you didn't have to have that pink license. Um, if I'd been made aware of that a lot easier, a lot earlier, I, I probably would have gone down a different path. Um, so no, I only knew about the pink. Um, and the pink was all about teaching me how to become an, an instructor. Um, and I think a lot of the focus was on how I teach. Um, but my, my training, I, I, I've questioned the quality. Um, and I've watched you teach, Josh, and you've watched me teach. Um, and I think that's where I've learned a lot of stuff um, is someone sat in the back of my car watching me do a lesson then sending me a screenshot of a pad with three lines of notes on it. That's all I got. Um, and then um, two Zoom calls, and I'm still yet to find anyone who can teach me how to become an instructor over Zoom. It just, it just doesn't do it for me. So I think uh, there are some... I thought, yeah, audit is audit. It's going to be awesome. This audit trained person is going to be awesome. I, I, I question the, I question that when through my own experience again. So, yeah, in a nutshell, pink was the only option I, I was aware of. That's the reason I went down. That's the route I went down. Sorry, and um, that's what the driving school sort of guided me towards. It wasn't even guided. They told me that was the option. That's what you need to do. Quite frustrating. So, yeah. Now, well, now you know what you do. What would you change if you could go back and start the process again? So, self-reflection. So, I probably would have spoken to the driving schools to see what, what it is, because the benefit was it was hugely discounted um, training, hugely discounted, I thought. But when you look at the um, what you did, you were in complete control of your costs. I say hugely discounted. I still think it was £2,900. That's without any additional training. That's without my CPD check, my pink license fees. They're all on top of that. Without my car hire, without my insurance, without, you know, I'm, all those things on top. So it was a, actually ended up being quite a hugely expensive um, thing. But I was told, you know, training is going to cost you about five grand. We're discounting it to 2,900, I think it was. So that, that I just felt, I just fell for the sales pitch. And I, you know, I kicked myself for it. So things I would have done differently, I definitely would have researched it. I would have spoken to some other driving instructors. Um, I would have reached out like like when we met on um, I think it was, was it a Facebook group or something I can't remember um, and just make sure that I remember we we met over at um, uh, the shopping centre we had a coffee um, we sort of clicked straight away and we we're sort of throwing business ideas around and all of a sudden I thought, Dude, he, he, what's going on here why am I paying all this money for, for to get the same thing it's, it's like it's like me going to Waitrose to buy beans. At one pound sixty, when I could exactly the same beans somewhere else for half the price, I was I was duped into being a Waitrose customer. I didn't I didn't actually need to be, but I wasn't getting Waitrose quality. I was just getting the same quality, if not worse than anyone else. So if I change anything, I would have taken longer to do it probably because I wouldn't have been rushed to do it, but it'd be a much better quality training. Because you know when people say you don't learn to drive until you pass your test, I think I yeah. learned to teach. 
when the amount of conversations we've had backwards and forwards, what would you do in this scenario? What would you do at that roundabout? What would you do at this junction? And we bounce ideas off each other. I think there would have been more of that in the training if I was doing non-pink and we were sitting having a coffee talking about how the, how's the training going. I think there would have been a lot more backwards and forwards discussions, debates, disagreements, um, agree to disagrees, all those sorts of things that we've had. I think that would have been a lot better quality. Uh, and as you know, when it comes to my um, my pink, uh, my trainer told me, you're not ready, sorry, I'm not putting you forward. You need to cancel your test. That was three days before my test, I think. Um, so I reached out to another instructor and said, look, I've been told I'm not ready. Can you sit in the back of a lesson for me? And um, tell me the tell me the truth. Um, and this was a revelation to me because for the first time, the instructor sat in the back listened to a lesson for about 20 minutes and said, Rick, that's all fine, but do you mind if I do some instruction for you with your pupil? I said, yeah, fill your boots. And just watching someone teach was an eye-opener. And that's when you and I started sitting together. I sat in the back, you sat in the back of lessons taking notes and said, what do you think of this? And that, that to me was, why hasn't my trainer actually showed me how to do a lesson? Rather than saying, Rick, what went wrong now? Oh, I'm not sure. I didn't have my foot off the clutch when I went around the corner. It wasn't, you know, it's, it's, it's the nuances of teaching. The I remember when I was first teaching, I thought, what do I do about these long silences between junctions? And then when I watched this uh, uh, instructor, when I sat in the back seat and watched them, it's the questions they were asking, the conversations they were striking. It was, all sounds really obvious now. And, I, and that was the day before my part three. And she said, Rick, as long as you do what we've discussed, you'll go out and, and you'll be fine. And I was. It, so it's the type of training for me. If I'd done that non-pink, I would have been a lot more aware with informal training, but, you know, quality questioning, quality debating, and just sitting in the backs of lessons, watching other people do stuff. That, that would have been brilliant, in my opinion. It was just awesome. It was awesome once that, that revelation came through. No, it's good. I got um, a lot of benefit from when I was sitting in the back of yours and when you were sitting in the back of yeah. my lessons and we was kind of bouncing ideas off each other. I found that was probably the most beneficial training that I had to prepare me for my part three. Because uh, obviously I failed my first one and I'm not sure whether we'd started that. I think we had, but only just. And then yeah, yeah. I failed my first part three. Um, my feedback made complete sense uh, yep. as to why I failed, couldn't argue it. I was like, yep, I understand that. I get it completely. Um, made some changes to what I was doing. And then... Come yeah, on in, Josh. Tell them what you got time. in your second part three. Come on. <laughs> I can't remember. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got an all right grade. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was the training that we was doing. And I think as well, being honest with each other and picking up the yeah. mistakes and not being scared to be like, well, maybe it was all right, but did you think about this? Did you think about that? Or just being straight to the point, I remember one conversation where it was like, you was doing most of it for them. Um, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, that was with, um, yeah, when I was, I said that was a great lesson. You said, yeah, Rick, who's doing all the steering? Well, occasionally I went over the steering wheel. Rick, do you realise how often you went over that steering wheel? My oh, God, yeah, you're right. So I'm praising her for doing really well, but I did it all. So I remember that, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that really helped me um, identify mistakes that my student was making that we could then work on. Yeah. And that then formed kind of the need so we could set goals around it. If I was intervening for something, maybe that wasn't the aim of the lesson, but it all of a sudden becomes the need. And then we set goals around fixing that before we continue what the actual aim of the lesson yeah. was um if we need to go back to it and i found that that was what helped me was when you was picking things up that maybe i hadn't noticed and a, a few little phrases that i use a lot now um <laughs> one of my students i was telling him to watch the curb because he was <laughs> yes, i can remember yeah remember and he curb. did watch it didn't he? he he was watching it really well and really close <laughs> uh, <laughs> but just little changes on that um, have really helped, especially with my students and positioning. But all I tell them now is look where you want to go a little bit like when you're telling youngsters, watch where you're going. 
it, yeah. it's the same thing you can't be looking at the car you can't be looking at the curb you need to be looking at where you're going and i think that came about from sitting in each other's lessons you wasn't an adi i wasn't an adi no. um we we had very little experience realistically but having someone watching and helping each other was was definitely a benefit so for what i experienced up until passing my part three um so what advice would you give to people that are looking to come into the industry and are just at the research stage that, that you said you wish you'd have done more of? So I, I would reach out. I would definitely reach out to um, driving instructors um, and just ask them some questions. There's some really nice instructors out there other than you and I. There are others out there who are willing to part information, willing to share. Um, well, first first view it looks like quite a closed industry when you sit in the in the test room it seems everyone wants to keep everything to themselves but there's some out there that are more than willing to share some information um and now i speak to a lot of independent instructors it's amazing what what they'll what they would change in there if they would have their time all over again and anyone that's been part of a franchise for any part of time you don't see them hanging around for too long they suddenly realize this isn't quite such a deal. So I would definitely research more. Reach out to people. Ask questions. Even if you go onto the um, DVSA website, you can find some instructors in your area. Reach out to them. Got a phone number. Got a message. Hey, I'm thinking of becoming. Would you mind having a cup of coffee and picking your brains on a few things? Um, and look look for honesty. Um, if someone's only talking about one particular way to go down, find someone else who's going to talk about the other way that you can go or the other options that you've got. Um, then you can make a decision based on what your lifestyle is and what your requirements are and why you're getting into the job. Um, the it's, it's a great job. It's, it's a, I find it fantastically relaxing, which my wife thinks bizarre. Why aren't you stressed out when you're sitting with all these people who can't drive? And the reason being is I'm in control. As you know, you're in control of everything that's going on. And seeing that face when someone passes their test you know it's just worth it's worth everything it's worth everything so reach out speak to people if they don't answer you probably wouldn't have wanted to talk to them in the first place but if they do answer pick their brains pick them for everything have, buy them a coffee uh it's like you and i did we sat down had a coffee we swapped some ideas i went away thinking oh god i've done this wrong too late now i've got my test in a few weeks <laughs> um but you know hindsight's a wonderful thing the way I went, was it wrong? No, it was right for me based on what I knew. If I knew differently, would I have done it differently? Absolutely. But having said that, driving school, some people will love the security of the driving school. Some people will love the fact that they've got a fully serviced car and don't have to worry about those sorts of things. They want that comfort that everything's covered. Um, I'm not so bothered about that because you can get a car fixed. <laughs> so... But I can understand why some people, some people want that brand. Um, my car is a car with no telephone numbers on, just an L plate on the front, an L plate on the back, and a green badge in the windscreen. And we do okay for business. Um, I, I can't remember the last time I advertised for business. My daughter was 17. I had all her friends come in. Then my son's just turned 17. And all his friends come in and friends and friends and friends. As you know, I could, we could be working seven days a week, 24 hours a day if we really wanted to. There's so much work out there. So you don't really, in my opinion, need that huge brand. And because I'm coming from a marketing background, be careful working for a brand because if that brand has any problems, you will be associated with it. So what I would do differently is just research, reach out, ask questions before you make some decisions. That's what I would do. Yeah, I think I fell into a very similar trap didn't really do much research i don't think i spoke to any driving instructors i just spoke to the big schools and in all honesty i took the package that was cheapest to get the hours training yeah. Yeah. um and and i was quite clear on the training that I'm probably not going to go down the franchise route um because at that point i think i'd already spoke to the insurance company it was like yeah goes in once you pass your part two you're you're good to go um you just can't charge for it so we've done a little bit on the training. I'm sure we can go into more specifics maybe at a later date on exactly how you found the training, what things you'd like to do more, stuff like that. But once you've passed and running a business, I see lots of questions on social media around 
running your business, whether that's when you start as a PDI and you're trying to juggle students or one student yeah. and you've got other kind of day-to-day of running a business, what kind of, uh, or what tips would you give to people that are maybe on the pink or or just looking to start the pink and, and managing the business? Um, speak to my accountants early. Speak. I didn't speak to an accountant until I had to um, supply my first um, self-assessment, which was quite a complicated one because I was half year employed and half year self-employed. If I'd spoken to them earlier, I wouldn't have got the shock of, by the way, Rick, your tax bill's coming through, you've got to pay this year's and half of next year's straight away, which was a complete shock to me. So speak to an accountant early um, and find out exactly what it is you need to do when you need to do it because I'm so used to being PAYE the fact that you had to pay tax, what do you mean that comes out of my salary? I don't have to, don't have to save for that. Surely someone takes it. Of course, I wasn't that naive. I knew, but I just wasn't aware that at the first year, you had to pay the full year's tax plus half of the next year's. And then in July, you've got to pay the other half. So it's the only it's the only business I know that you actually pay your tax up front. It's, inc- it's incredible, but I wasn't aware of that. So that was a hell of a shock. Be aware of and speak to the accountants. What are you and what aren't you allowed to claim? Um, just be careful because you can quite easily get yourself into trouble if you think you can just claim for everything. Um, understand the full cost of running your business and either speak to, again, an accountant or someone who's run a small business. As a sole trader, you know, you need to know where every penny's going. What is my fuel cost? What is my mileage rate? What am I going to charge? Um, all those sorts of things. But um, there is a finite number you can charge. You, You've got to realise how much profit do I want to make, but it doesn't mean you can go and charge 60 quid an hour because you want to make um, a 35 quid an hour profit. So understand what your business is. Don't just think a driving instructor is a driving instructor. It's a business. You need to make profit. And um, understand yeah, what your costs are, what your, out- what your real outgoings are. The fuel is going to cost you a lot more than you think it's going to cost you. The maintenance is going to cost you a lot more than you think it's going to cost you. Rather than having a car serviced every year, I think mine's not even one year old. It's coming up to its second service. Um, tires, my blimey, they, you go through tires quite quickly if you're not careful. That's why I was steering all the time during that lesson. You told me <laughs> not to tip on the steering. Alloys, you need your alloys replaced because they sometimes, if you're not quick enough, they're going to. So all these costs that just mount up without you knowing cleaning the car i used to clean my car once every year if it needed it i have to do it weekly now because apparently um, clients like to come into a clean environment so i have to wash the outside <laughs> and clean the inside of my car so they're all costs and you just don't think of them so yeah speak to an accountant one understand your business and what you want to do two keep in touch with with um instructors that you click with um and you can have a good rapport with meet them up meet up with coffee i know we don't get to know uh, together enough for coffee but have a chat we have great fun debating things that we've seen and things that we do um so yeah and make sure that the clients you're bringing on they're getting the absolutely best service because that's what we are a service into it they're getting the best service you can possibly provide them um yeah, that, that, I think that's about it, unless I, I can't think of anything else. So a lot of the things that you've mentioned there um, wasn't covered at any part during my training, uh, but I didn't go down the franchise route. Did you get any advice and guidance um, through the school with that side of things, or or did you kind of figure it out to your own devices? Do you wish so I, 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 can remember, I can remember calling the... Um... The driving school and said look um what do i do about my accounts and i said oh, oh don't worry um it's just self-assessment and i had done self-assessment in the past because of the job i was in I had to do self-assessment i thought okay don't worry about that, that's fine and that's the advice i got on accountants that is it that is it and then i had an app called total drive um which was provided to me um which it's a great app. I would recommend any PDI, ADI go out for it because you can diary manage, you can money manage, you can cost manage, you can expense. You know, everything can be run through that one app. Um, so if you're 
if you're going to do anything, get something that's going to be electronic to make your accounting easily easy. But again, I, I just thought at first it was just a diary. People put stuff in my diary. I saw the lessons come through. I did the lessons. I made sure they were paid for. It's only when I started digging into the app, because I had no app training. I'm 57 years old. I don't do technology. <laughs> I played around with the app, and I there's a lot more. You can, what's this finance section here? Oh, my God, it's got expenses, and it's got, it's got revenue on it. Oh, my God, it's got different levels of expenses, which are vat- you know, which are taxable, which are non-taxable, so I could put my expenses in the right places. I had to figure that all out myself. So, yeah, speak to people. <laughs> There's a lot of help out there. Um, if you don't look for it, it won't all be given to you because they've done their business for a long time. They, they're doing things that they don't even think about. A bit like when you're teaching people to drive. We drive, we don't have to think about it. They run businesses, they don't have to think about it. And they forget that I'm new to this and I need to think about things and they just forget about it. Yeah, that was something that I found really helped quite early on because obviously I was in a job and I was teaching for free on the side, but then I'm like, well, can I put that this down as a training expense? As it turned out, I, I don't think I could, but once I'd passed, I was then teaching and obviously charging and setting up a school work well in my other job. Um, but one of the first things I'd done was was spoke to an accountant and it was a little bit of an eye opener. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and since then I've had the same accountant and I'm like, yeah, here, here's my info, you deal with it. Um, because I had no, I tried learning about tax and I'm like, yeah, let, let's pay some money for what they're doing. Um, so that's certainly something that I think could benefit people is understand the finance side of it would would be one of the first steps to I, the business, I guess. I, I can remember it was you who gave me the accountant's name and I was already charging for <laughs> charging for business. I was already past my part three. I was running a business and you started talking to us as an accountant. Oh, I don't know. I haven't even thought about that. He said, ring, ring this number. They'll help you out. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and so that shows how far down the line I, I was even not even not even thinking about an accountant. I've done my part three. I was already running a business. Um, I think I was still with the school at the time. I can't remember. Yeah, I was probably still with the school, but I hadn't even thought about an accountant that late down the road. It's when you mentioned it. I went, oh, yeah, that could be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just thought it was a cost. What- I saw them as a cost, but I'll benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it is expensive, but the amount of time that they saved me. um, Absolutely. Teaching. Absolutely. Sat in the back garden doing nothing. 100%. It took me an hour just to set up this Zoom. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to be on at one o'clock. It's at three. (laughs) Very, very. No, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because I, I obviously never pursued the franchise route and to see that you didn't really have much more support than what I did um, no. other than maybe you you had access to students a little bit easier than what I did when I started. But well, as you know, it didn't take me very long to fill any spaces that no. I wanted. Um, and and since then, it's, it's it's just taken care of itself for the most part. So that's interesting that the support was was mainly, I assume, from your point of view, you had the, the brand and access to students yeah. and, and discounted training. Yeah, I, I think they're the three things. Discounted training um, at face value. Not knowing anything about the industry, you've got the support of that big company behind you. Um, access to clients, yes. But as I said, with hindsight, I can remember sit again, sitting and having a chat with you and thinking, I've just spent a lot of money and my best training has been sat in the back of your car or you sat in the back of my car and the other ADI give me a hand. And I think we did that over a two-week period, something like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there are definitely is. benefits, but you, you need to weigh up. This is the franchise route, Pink. This is the non-franchise on your own. Which works for you? And with hindsight, again, if I would fully understood the both options, the one that the non-pink would have suited me better. It would have suited my learning style. It would have suited my training style rather than chasing the pink. So there will people out there who will benefit from the pink license and they will love the pink license. They will love the franchise because that's what they need. That's what they want. 
as I said, if I had both options, if I was aware of both options, I would have made a completely different decision and gone down a completely different path and ended up with the same result. Yeah, I, th I think the awareness and research is is a big one. I mean, it where when was it? It wasn't until I was doing my 40 hours for my part three that I found out what audit was. So I'd already yeah. done and passed my part two. No idea what audit was. Um, so I think the awareness could be better because there are a lot of people out there that just offer training as well, audit instructors that maybe don't look to tie you into a contract um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and smash you with students. But it's, it's interesting that we, we both qualified kind of together, different paths, um, different views on the training that we received, where we ended up and, and what we do in hindsight. I'm kind of glad I went the route I did. I think if I'd have been in your position, just left my job and decided to do something else then i think i'd have had to have gone down the pink route and it would have massively helped me being able yeah. to charge but then i probably would have had the flip side of when am i going to like do my own learning uh because i've got to support a family maybe you should have done it differently you should have gone pink it. josh because of your situation i should have gone non-pink because of mine we'll hit the rewind we'll go again <laughs> yes, let's go again <laughs> <laughs> So how are you finding the job now? Now you've been qualified, been doing it a couple of years now, is it? How long? Two years on the end of this yeah, month. Hold on. Is. Two years. 30th of June, 2025, this runs out. So, yeah, two years. Um, I, I, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Um, I can manage my own diary. Um, I'll tell you a little story. So a few months back from my old industry, I had a call from a Chinese company um, that wanted me to um, open up and start running their European and Middle East um, sales uh, for e-commerce distribution into China, which is what I used to do. So I asked them one question, a couple of questions. Can I have every Friday off to play golf? And can I take off any time whenever I like it? And they said, no, and I can't think of a company that would. I said, well, I found one. I'll stick with it. Thank you very much. See you later. That's what I like. I'm in control. Nobody's in control of me. I don't have to sit there and do strategic planning. I don't have to write out a, a comprehensive marketing plan for the next three, five years. I don't have to fly to China to report to people who don't understand the European market, then tell you what to do, and then blame you when it goes wrong. Um, I'm in control of what I do. Uh, I've met some fantastic people like yourself. We have some great fun debating roundabouts, which I'm always right about and you're always wrong. Um, <laughs> um, um, I'm more chilled because I have the free time when I want free time. I see my daughter more. Well, she's going to uni now, but I, you know, I saw my family a lot more. I'm more relaxed at weekends when I'm not working because I'm not stressed. Um, there's huge amounts of health benefits to it. Uh, apart from, hold on one second. Oh, are you still there? Yeah. If I just yeah. Quite easy to gain weight in this game if you're not careful. <laughs> I'm so used to being so active and not rather than just sitting in the car all the time. Blimey, O'Reilly. Um, so, yeah, watch your weight. Don't don't stop for the pasties all the time. Go in and, you know, make sure you make a, a nice packed lunch. Um, but, yeah, it's just the freedom, Josh. You meet some fantastic people. But the big thing for me is when you pull along to the side of the car, the pupil opens the door and the examiner says, that's of your end of the test. And I'm happy to say it, it's a feeling that I can, I'll, ne I'll, I'll never lose. On the flip side, there's the other feeling. When they go out on test, I don't know who's more nervous, me or them. I hate that bit, but I actually quite like that I feel nervous because to me, that means that you care. Um, and I hope I'll never lose that nervousness when you're your pupils, that you, you build some great relationships with over, over the period. And I always remind myself, I'm helping someone achieve a goal in life, which is probably going to change their lives forever. That is amazing. But you, you can't, I knew you can't buy that, but I did through the pink license and it was very expensive. But, but <laughs> um, it, it's, it's an amazing thing. As you know, Josh, it's incredible. That's what I love about this job. 
It's, uh, what about you? Yeah. How are you finding it now that you're out there on your own, non-uniform day? I uh, I wish I'd have took your advice earlier. Um, I, you you told me obviously you'd been on a pink, so you was you was more experienced managing a diary than than what I am. And you told me you'll say yes to everything. You'll be working all yeah. hours. Don't. Um, I wish I'd have took that advice. I'm now trying to ease off the diary a little bit. Um, just to win back family time. This was why one of the reasons I got into the industry was see the family and move away from from the job I was doing previous. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still working long days. They're they're starting to get shorter now. So I've decided to do a podcast and make my days longer again. Why not? But yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's it. some logic there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but think of this though, Josh, you're now doing this in your own time from your own house rather than running around doing what someone else. You're doing podcasts, I presume, because you choose to, not because you've been told yeah. to. I'm doing it because I want to speak to more people in the industry. And like you said about the training, um, reach out to people, talk to people. I've been surprised with how many people have come forward like when I put the post out about the podcast. Um, yeah. And it's it's difficult until you're in the industry to find people without going on the DVSA's website and finding instructors near you, which was a service I didn't find out about until yeah. my name was on the register and I had to give them my details. Yeah, and everyone keeps ringing <laughs> you for a, a lesson tomorrow because they got a test the next day. And... Yeah, yeah, so I think that the podcast the aim is to talk to as many instructors as i can find out what everyone's doing there's a lot of people doing a lot of interesting things um and find out what everyone's doing and hopefully it'll it'll give some people a platform to to speak to people as well um let's see where it goes i enjoy talking to people um it's it's been good feedback so far from from the conversations I've had. No, I, th and I, yeah, I think it's cracking. Time. Yeah, so I think it's absolutely cracking. I think it's absolutely cracking. It's it's something that's missing is, um, even in the, the industry I was in, you know, uh, within the e-commerce world, you had people, you just wouldn't ask something because you would just get their answer. It wouldn't be an informed discussion. It would be their answer, and this is the way it should be done. Um, so you just didn't approach them. And there are lots of people that become very clicky within the industry I was in. And you just, it was almost like a a gang mentality, if you like. You know, th these are the people that are in control of everything. Um, and I find, that, you know, in this industry, if you go to the wrong people, you're going to get the wrong advice. So I think this podcast is a great opportunity to get different opinions of, from different people. And then people can log on here, have a listen hear what they like hear what they don't like and pick and choose and i think that is awesome mate. i think it's a cracking idea and i wish you the best of luck with it i really do thank you we'll see where it goes maybe i'll have you on again um and and we'll see where it goes from there any last points that you'd like to get out before we uh before we close it there um no just if you're if, if you're starting out um uh, coming into the industry um have fun it, it, it's remember that we um we're working i nearly said hard but this isn't the hard work it's um it's fun make sure you have fun make sure it can be very lonely reach out to people get yourself a couple of buddies that you can talk to and meet up for a cup of coffee and you can vent your frustrations to as you know i'm often rang you up and said bloody hell have you seen this or where have you heard that or you should have seen this driver on this roundabout and um have someone you can vent to uh, and someone you can question that you know you're going to get um, a debate out of or, or a reasonable answer. You need those resources behind you to to keep you sane with nothing else. That's my advice. But have fun. It's great. It really is great. It is. And I think it shows with the students as well. I've, I've seen your lessons. They seem to all enjoy it, um, which is good. It was good to see. Learn a lot. Um, and I'm going to keep learning. Hopefully I can get back out in your car again soon. Um, and we'll see see where it goes from there. Absolutely. I mean, look at that. It's, what, 25 to 4 on a Saturday. I'm going to go in, crack open a bottle of wine, watch the rest of the cricket. Happy days. Could what life be any better? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. Excellent. 